As soon as you see a sorted array, you know that you will have to search for something. However, the catch over here is that this array has been rotated a certain number of times and we do not know about it. However, you can still find out the minimum element in a very efficient manner by using a technique that you already know about. So let's find out about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start off with the most naive approach possible and then figure out how you can use the binary search technique to actually arrive at an answer. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we understand the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array that is already sorted. And this is a very vital piece of information. You will shortly understand why. The caveat over here is that this array is rotated by an unknown number of times. So what does array rotation actually mean? So for example, let us say I have this sample array. And when you rotate it once, what will happen? When you rotate it once, this 10 will get over here and this 1 will get over here. So all the elements will shift by 1. So after one rotation, this array will look something like this. What happens after two rotations? All of the elements will once again shift by one space. So my array starts to look something like this. So this is what the problem statement is. This array is already sorted, but this array is rotated two times, correct? In the problem statement, you have all of these test cases. Notice that all of the arrays are sorted but we do not know how many times these arrays have been sorted. So given this condition, you have to find me the minimum element that is present in the array. So now I hope that the problem statement is pretty much clear to you. Given our test cases, for the first test case, one is the minimum element, so this will be the answer. In the second test case, zero is the minimum element, so this will be the answer. And in the third test case, 11 is the minimum element, and this will be your answer. So, our problem statement is very much simplified. So how do you go about solving it? To start understanding the problem, let us take up a bigger test case. Notice that I have my array over here and it is sorted. It is also rotated by an unknown number of times. I do not know how many times. So if you have to approach this problem in the most naive way, what will you do? The first approach that will come to your mind is, okay, I will scan the entire array and then I will find out, okay, what is the minimum element? That works, right? You will be able to find the minimum element in order of n time complexity, right? You will just scan the array and keep a track of the minimum element, right? Now comes the interesting part. You will think, okay, I want to optimize this method. And this clicks your mind that, okay, this array is sorted. You know that this array might be rotated as well, correct? So what you can do is you can start to traverse the array from the very beginning right? And notice that you will keep on getting bigger and bigger elements, 5, 7, 8, and then a 12. So what you want to do is you will keep on scanning the elements until and unless you get an element that is smaller than my previous element. So notice what happens. You see 12, that is bigger than the previous element, then a 15, then a 20. And suddenly what happens? You get a minus 7. So if this array were sorted, all of the elements should be bigger, right? but you see a smaller element. So what just happened? It means that this is your pivot element or this is the point from which your array was rotated. So what you can do is you can simply stop over here and then say that, okay, this is my answer. Why? Because your array is rotated and you know that all the elements after this will be larger, correct? You were able to take some advantage of the fact that the array is sorted and it is not necessary that you will have to scan the entire array. But once again, even for this method, the time complexity is order of n. That is the worst case time complexity. Because it could be possible that the minimum element lies over here. Or it can also be at the very end. Think about it. If your array has four elements and it got rotated three times, the minimum element will reach at the very last position. So you will have to scan your entire array. So once again, this method gave us some optimization, but it is not enough. We want an even faster approach. We never fully utilize the fact that this array is already sorted. 
And whenever you see a sorted array, it means that you have to apply the binary search algorithm somewhere or the other. So let us look at this problem once again. I have my array over here and let us try to apply the binary search. What is the first thing we do in binary search? We assign our left pointer and a right pointer, correct? So these are the two extremes. After this, what do you do? You will try to find out the middle element. In this case, let us say the middle element comes over here, right? If you had to search an element in a sorted array, what do you usually do? You would do something like this, right? ARR at mid equals to some target value that you have to search, correct? And based upon this, you either move your left pointer or your right pointer, correct? That is the binary search approach. But in this particular problem, you do not have any target value. How will you compare this mid number? Who do you compare it to? You don't have anything, correct? Wrong. If you notice, all of the elements in the array, for example, I take this random element. What is happening? The left element is smaller and the right element is larger than this. Even for 15, the left element is smaller and the right element is larger. Check out zero. The left element is smaller and the right element is larger. But if you notice, look at minus seven. This is the minimum element, correct? And what do you see? You see that both the left and the right, both of the elements are larger. This is the only exception. So you are searching for an element where the left is larger and the right is larger. And based upon this, you can move your left and right pointers. So now you have your mid pointer, correct? So what do you do? You check if this element smaller than both of my left and the right elements. No, right? So that means it is not the minimum element. This is not the pivot. I have to scan somewhere else. Also, what is binary search doing for you? Binary search divided your array in two halves, correct? And where do you search next? You know that for binary search, you have to discard one of them. But which one of them? If you see this particular array, check out the first element and the last element. The first element is smaller than the last element. It means that this array is already sorted. So naturally, you cannot find your answer in this particular array. But if you look at the other one, the first element is larger than the second element. This does not signify a sorted array, right? It means that I will find my pivot somewhere in here. So what do you need to do? You need to look at only this right half of the array. So what will you do? You will move your left pointer all the way up to mid plus one. And what did you effectively do? You got rid of half of your array, correct? Now, once again, try to find out the mid value. Once you find out the mid value, you land at this particular element. And once again, apply your check. Is this element smaller than both the left element and the right element? No, right? The left element is smaller and the right element is greater. So this is also not my pivot element. This is also not the minimum. So what do you do again? Again, you will separate your array in two halves. And once again, you need to check which half is already sorted. Zero is less than two. So this part is sorted. 20 is greater than minus four. So this part is not sorted. So what do I do? I get rid of the next half and this will move my right pointer at the location of mid. I think you are now getting the idea. Once again, you will try to find out the mid value and this time mid points at minus seven. Again, do your comparison. If the left element and the right element both are greater, it means that this is the minimum element in your array. So with this iteration, you will confidently identify that, hey, I have reached my mid element and you can simply return minus seven as your answer. So if you notice, at every iteration, we are applying the binary search technique and getting rid of half of the array. So this gives you a time complexity of order of log n. And trust me, it is very, very, very much faster than doing the order of n time complexity. Because order of n would increase like this, whereas order of log n would move something like this. And that is a significant reduction in the time taken. Now, based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code. On the left side of your screen, if you notice, you have a very similar code that looks exactly like the binary search technique because it is. 
And on the right, I have a sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function find main. Starting off with the dry run, what is the first thing that you do? First of all, you will initialize two pointers left and right that are pointing at the first location and the last index of the array respectively, correct? After that, you will start a while loop. And this while loop is very, very similar how you do the binary search technique. You find a mid element and then once you have found out that mid element, you will check, hey, is this mid element actually my pivot element or the minimum element? And based upon what we just discussed, you will either move your left pointer ahead near the mid, so you are reducing your sample space, or you will move your right pointer to the mid. That means you are reducing your sample space like this. So this is how the binary search will continue on working. And when this loop ends, your left pointer will be pointing at the minimum element in your array. Just try doing it step by step in your debugger and it will be very, very clear to you. So once this loop ends, simply return the element that is at the left index and that will be your answer. I hope this solution will now stick in your mind forever. I just want to say that whenever you see a sorted array, it straight away indicates that you are expected to apply the binary search technique because it works on the divide and conquer paradigm, right? Where in each iteration, you can simply discard half of your sample size. So this speeds up the process a lot. You will achieve a log in time complexity and that is very, very fast. Also keep in mind that sometimes it is not obvious that the binary search technique can be applied over here. In those scenarios, it may be possible that you need an order of n time or order of n log n time to actually massage your array and bring it in a format where you can apply the binary search technique. So just keep these things in mind and always form your solution by thinking of all of these methods. So while going throughout the video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other method by which you can simplify the problem even more? How did you solve this problem? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.